hey, I get it. Bone Hound is awesome. You just drop a file, run it, and then all the information about the targeted Active Directory is just there. You can see all the users that can DC sync, you can see all the domain admins, all the workstations, servers, and so on. But what if both hand is incompatible? What if you went into an environment which has super strict settings in terms of network segmentation or endpoint protection, and then you can't get either implant to run or you can't run the shark hound itself? Well, in that case, how can you enumerate the Active Directory? Well, I got you there. The tool you see on the screen is called AdLanch. This is an Active Directory ACL visualizer. The full link to the repository can be found on the description of that video. And now, let's set up that thing. Based on the UI, your first guess can be, well, that should be super hard to set up and that's also incompatible in some environments because you can either need to run some kind of a server, chain things together, get data the same as a bloodhound, but trust me, it's not like that. In order to get started with AdLanch, the only thing you need to do is to navigate to its GitHub repository, go to the Releases tab, scroll all a little bit down and find the file that's suitable for your OS. In that case, that would be AdLanch Windows X64 and just download it. After the file is downloaded, I can just open a PowerShell from there, I can do LS to verify the file is there and I can just execute it. That's it. That's all about it. When you execute the file, it's gonna collect all the data from the Active Directory and then store it into a locally hosted server and the binary is gonna do it on its own. Now after just a minute, this is the entry screen of the AD Lunch tool. As you can see, you don't need to install any additional tools, any additional graphical UIs, it works with the browser which makes it extremely compatible. Now this is the main UI, here we have some option on how to visualize the nodes and the things we see on the graphs as we run LDAP queries. This is our LDAP syntax there, we can type any custom LDAP queries we want. Then we have the exporting, which you can export different objects by just clicking on them, for instance, all the uh, domain controllers, just like that. We can see all the users there, all the computers which are installed into the Active Directory, but the fun part are the LDAP queries. Now let's see what AdLanch can actually do. If we do on the simple queries, these are the built-in queries that comes with the tool. Now here we can observe that they are similar to Bloodhound, but let's see how they work. Now we can see who can DC sync. Let's try that. Let's just click the query, we can see the base LDAP syntax for it, and we can just click Analyze. By doing so, we can see a big graph. Now, the graph, in my opinion, is not that well done as, as the Bloodhounds is. I've simultaneously run Bloodhound on my current machine and run the exact same query to perform all the, to see all the members who can this thing. And to be honest, that thing is kind of better. But with the Edivanch, we are talking about first evasiveness, second compatibility. So based on the compatibility, the release date of the product, that thing is quite amazing. Now, here we can see all the people and the groups which can this sync and effectively this is the, pretty much the same output as the Bloodhound but visualized a little bit differently. Now, this user can this sync, this user is marked as red because that's a special set of permission I manually assigned to it. That's not a domain admin, John Smith's normal user which can this sync and that's why I believe it's in a huge red because the attack vector for this user is actually bigger. Now, k to that is the actual domain admin. We have another domain admin there. We have another domain admin there and another one. Then we have the DCs, which are like that. And pretty much that's about it. It's a little bit of a mess, but still it's giving you the details you need. Now let's try another query. So we can do who can change GPOs, analyze that. And there we are, we can see all the entities that can change any kind of GPOs. We have even templates for ESC1. So if I run it, we can see all the routes that are potentially vulnerable to ESC1 attacks and exploits. Pause in the video just to say thank you to my Patreon sponsors. You have no idea how much that means to me, guys. If you also have further appreciation to the channel, don't hesitate to become my patron, where you can get access to my private tools, my private packer, my private notes, and a special Discord role, which allows you to join the Patreon chat and also request videos for YouTube and for Patreon from there. Thank you so much. One of the most useful queries I found over my very small experience with that tool is actually mapped like that. First, of course, as mentioned before, who can actually this thing, then we have who can change GPOs, then we have users that can change the password and it's very likely that have some kind of initial password and then the password can be stored maybe in description fields, who knows. Then we have super, super important 
query which is computers and unconstrained delegation which have known DC. So if I run that, we can see all the computer accounts that are applicable for unconstrained delegation. And by the way, if you haven't watched the video about unconstrained delegation, you can find it on the top right corner. You can also read my book, which is in the description of that video. But let's get moving. In a nutshell, these are all the machine accounts that are applicable for, un for unconstrained delegation, which means that if you, for example, compromise SQL 02, you can compromise the DC 02 and the DC 01 which means the whole domain. Now, another useful query that I found super nice is the servers and workstations. And by clicking Analyze, you can see a random number of servers. Now, I have a super small Active Directory lab, which has like five or seven or eight servers, but in real environment, you're going to have a lot. And the cool thing about Eddie is you can, in runtime, modify the outdoor queries that have been made. For instance, if I want to do like limit one, I can just see only one server. And on the other hand, I can just do limit 1000 and just see the top random 1000 servers, which is to my opinion, super nice because if you're familiar with the LDAP queries, you can perform magic with these two. On top of that, we can also see computer accounts with constrained delegations. So, so these two maps the delegation ACLs between object, super nice, and I believe better than Bloodhound. Another super interesting query would be who can actually dump SAM or system remotely from RDP, for example. So this thing here requires a specific group, server and backup operators, which is usually present on the Active Directory. And when that thing is present, when some user is a member of that group, he can remotely dump over RDP or different kind of protocols. He can dump SAM and system, which contains all the credentials based for this specific system. Now, from the output, we can see that the server operators, which actually these are members from, can actually perform this action. Now, don't get me wrong, these are all domain admin, but our little user, John Smith there, is actually not who is still capable of doing that. So this can be potentially be a huge escalation and lateral moving vector. And as you can see, ID Ranch shows super nice things about the Active Directory, which can directly lead you into some kind of exploitation. Now you may ask, all right, but that too looks so complicated to me. And I would respond, well, there are some nicely written documentation on, the, on their GitHub page. So for instance, there is documentation how to build it to yourself. If you don't want to download the pre-install binaries there, the pre-compiled ones, then there's also documentation how you can grab the contents of the Active Directory from a remote Linux system or remote win or Windows system only if you have credentials to authenticate to the Active Directory. And when you download the AD Ranch, you can perform a collect command, which is going to do like Active Directory. You can specify a bunch of options there, specify the domain, specify username, specify password, and there you are. There's documentation about anything. There's documentation about how to gather local data on the Windows system. There's a documentation about what are, for instance, uh, the current settings of the tool and the current optimizations, how much RAM does it cost. There's also documentation about office detectors like that and what they do and how they work. So about the documentation, I can really say the guys did a really nice job and for, for the whole tool, they did a nice job. I am super happy with it. I might for real try it in some real engagement and I encourage you guys to just Try the tool, see how, what it does, how it works, does it suit your need, and how evasive it is. Speaking of evasion, in this video we're gonna port it to MetaDefender. MetaDefender is an anti-scanning alternative, which is capable of scanning a file, and they claim they do not publish the samples of the scan, so I can port the aid launch into the MetaDefender. Somehow, I just don't enjoy the idea for now me doing the live virus out of a port, so I'll stick to Meta Defender, but based on the 12 engine Meta Defender supports, none detects the binary. If I pass Sharkhound there, I'm sure that at least 10 of them will. So in base of evasiveness, the tool is brand new. It's not that exploited as, uh, so far, and that's why it does not have firms that many signatures, and a lot of the vendors obviously don't think that thing is very malicious. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope it was insightful to you, and I'm waiting for your feedback. Try the tool, try it in different environments, see how it works, and drop your thoughts and feedback onto the comments of this video. Thanks so much, and see you in the next one.